Paula Dragnich got pregnant when she was 34, but her first ultrasound showed that the fetus was deformed. The diagnosis was clear, the baby would not survive. Tumours began to appear in Paula's placenta and she almost died during pregnancy. The only thing they did to stop me dying was monitor me to see how I was coping. My placenta was filled with tumours. They did ultrasounds every day and took blood tests to check my hormone levels. My placenta looked like a bunch of grapes. You couldn't even see the embryo. But they could still feel its heartbeat. My belly looked like I was six or seven months pregnant. It was only when Paula's life was in danger that doctors agreed to admit her to hospital to arrange an abortion. It's all lies and manipulation. They pushed a pill up inside me without even telling me. I kept calm for four and a half months, but then I realized they wanted me to give birth so they could pass it off as a miscarriage. That's when I screamed, because it was an operation. I called the nurse and said, you, anesthetize me. General anesthetic, now or I'll call the police. Each year, hundreds of women in Chile face either high-risk or unwanted pregnancies due to medical problems or rape. At the age of 40, Paula Valenzuela wanted another child. But she had a complicated pregnancy, and the fetus didn't develop properly. And yet, she couldn't abort. They're called amniotic bands. There are fibers and they look like knives. And these knives were cutting into my little baby each time it grew. That's why he lost an arm. It's like being a walking coffin because you know your child's not going to live. It's a living agony every day. You get up in the morning and you say, is my baby going to die today? Early termination is outlawed in all circumstances in Chile, but tens of thousands of women still abort each year by using misoprostol, a drug you can buy on the black market. In some posh areas, women pay a lot of money to abort in private clinics. It's an open secret, but still, when the former health minister pointed it out, it caused uproar and she was forced to resign. I won't deny what I said, because I said it, and I said what I thought. But it's a general observation. I'm not accusing any particular clinic. Decriminalize abortion. That was the campaign promise of Socialist President Michelle Bachelet, who sent her bill to Congress in January 2015. Under the gaze of pro- and anti-abortion campaigners, the lower house voted last March to allow abortion in three cases after a rape, when the woman's life is in danger, or when the fetus is severely deformed. But now the draft bill is stuck in the Senate. It lacks the unconditional support of the Christian Democrats, even though the party is in the president's coalition. This Catholic party doesn't want to allow abortion in cases of rape, as proposed by the current bill. They want further debate. Pro-abortion groups accuse the Christian Democrats of trying to gain time by prolonging the talks. We've been debating this for over three years, so this idea that we need to keep on talking is false. I think they should legislate as soon as possible because we keep on seeing cases of women with fetuses that can't survive outside the womb and that doctors send them away to pray to see if they can solve it with a miracle. So I think they need to act quickly. I think the government needs to consider the bill as urgent in the Senate. Meanwhile, the anti-abortionists are mobilizing. They are supported by the Catholic Church and by many doctors. This protest outside the presidential palace was organized by this gynecologist. Behind his civilized discourse, there lies a fierce opposition to all forms of abortion, even in cases of fetal deformation. Abortion can never be a medical practice because there is no medical practice that involves killing. Looking after the sick is humane, medical and healthy. We know that at some point a sick fetus will die, but we're all going to die. And when someone you care for is going to die, you don't kill them, you look after them until the end. 
lo acompaña hasta que se muere. This doctor says nothing will change if the law is approved. He still won't carry out abortions. Life is above the law, and if we believe that there is human life, as doctors we're taught to respect it, to care, to protect, to heal, to restore life, not to kill. And therefore I have every right to follow my conscience and refuse to carry out an abortion. With the draft law stuck in the Senate, with society divided and the ruling coalition fragmented, how will the government get this law approved? Meanwhile, the protests are mounting. In 2013, 166 women in Chile were charged with abortion. 22 of them were found guilty.